Namaste and welcome to another edition of Live, Love, Engage. And I am delighted as always to have a guest with us on the show. I really enjoy meeting some really interesting, talented, amazing people. And today's guest is no exception. Um, although I did realize I neglected to ask you how to pronounce your name, but I'm assuming it's how it's spelled. It's Dr. Nadia Brown. Yep. You got it. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. I just was hoping Nadia wasn't, wasn't, you know, something different than <laughs> it looked like. So, um, well, let me tell you, all about uh, Dr. Brown. And so the way, the reason she has that is that she has a doctoral degree in organizational leadership, and she's passionate about helping women become more authentic, confident leaders who take charge of their careers. And not only that, she's also a sales strategist, a consultant trainer, and she's the founder of her own company called the uh, Doyen Agency, which is a sales agency that works with business owners, companies, and corporations to multiply revenue and awaken the consistent closer within your sales team using her proprietary consistent sales method, which I love that. And that's what we're going to, we're going to talk a bit about that today. We're going to talk about sales because I know as a woman entrepreneur myself that when I first went into business and I had, and I realized that, oh, that meant I had to sell. <laughs> I kind of I didn't, didn't connect that originally. And, and uh, you know, cause I had preconceived notions about sales and, and I'm sure lots of you listening and watching out there may have had that as well. But I like to start off with asking our guest uh, a little bit about their journey. So what, actually brought you um, to this point where you are this founder of your agency? Because also in doing a little research on you, I saw that you not only have this doctoral degree, but you also had, you had like a BS degree in computer engineering. So you've, you've come a long way from that. So I'm curious to know what, uh, you know, what, what is this journey that brought you here? Oh my goodness. Uh, well, I left corporate, obviously. <laughs> I left corporate <laughs> and decided to launch a business. Um, similar to what you were sharing, Gloria, I had the same thing. Like, I was like, wait, what? I have to sell now? Like, oh, crap. Um, and helping women leaders and, you know, really be more authentic and powerful in their leadership roles. But obviously, I needed to overcome this big sales hurdle. And I often share that I was I'm the least likely person that would ever lead a sales agency because... <laughs> I didn't like sales. I was just like, I don't know how I'm going to do this business, but I just want to do the work that I love and, you know, someone else deal with the selling. Well, that didn't happen. That is not my story. I had to figure it out. Um, and through that journey, there were quite a few things that I learned um, in that. One was I actually do like sales um, once I figured out how to do sales my way. But I also realized that there were some parallels in the challenges that women who were in mostly in corporate were dealing with in their leadership roles that a lot of women in business were dealing with when it came to sales. And um, I have to give credit where credit is due. So I have some very loving friends who gently and not so gently nudged me into like, girl, you need to really think about sharing your knowledge and your approach to sales with others and really supporting them. And that was the beginning of the conversations around launching a sales agency. Oh, that's awesome. Now you, you mentioned there's uh, some similarities there in, in the corporate world and, and business. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? What, what are you talking Absolutely. about? Absolutely. So one of the things that I talked a lot about before I started doing so much about sales was shattering your inner glass ceiling. So in corporate, you hear a lot about the glass ceiling, which we don't even have time to dive into all of that, but trust <laughs> that there are, there, there are challenges and opportunities. And a couple of things, though, that I noticed was that while there are definitely um, challenges that women face, I'm not, not downplaying that at all. I also started to find out that because we knew that there were these challenges that were in place, there were those times when we would say no to ourselves first, mm -hmm. or we wouldn't speak up, or we would start to buy into these stories that we've been hearing sometimes, even before we were old enough to work, right? And so it was, you know, how do we, how do we get out of our own ways 
so it better equips us to then be able to deal with the challenges that are very present. And when you look at sales, a lot of times we had those same issues that some of that just carried over for those of us where in corporate, we weren't um, pricing as competitively, weren't willing to talk about the money or ask for the sale. We would sometimes tell ourselves no before our prospect had it, you know, so we started to see yep. those similarities between the two. Yeah, that's and that makes so much sense. And, and, and I understand that because it is... Selling is challenging. You know, we uh, there's this idea that, well, there's the stereotypical salesperson. You know, the the car salesman, and 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 I think people then think, and especially even women, that well, the only way I'm going to be able to be successful is I've got to sell to them, as opposed to inviting people in to to invest in you or to enroll in what you're, you're selling. And I, I know I had to go through this too, because I just, yeah, I had a lot of these things, the same, and the same issues with even not pricing. And it comes down to, you know, valuing yourself. I think a, a lot of that and not, not valuing yourself enough. Mm -hmm. um, but you talk about that. There's, there's a, in particular, a, a critical sales quality that we need to have if we want to be successful what what is that critical quality that uh, all trivial all, all people but probably even women in particular need to have if they want to be successful well there's one that i talk about a lot and that's courage i feel like we need a lot of courage <laughs> to, to, to deal with just what you said you know the pricing that discomfort to be willing to extend the invitation I would even add to be willing and courageous enough to sell like you. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the things that I want to help women with is you don't have to sell, like you said, the used car salesman. I think we all think of him. <laughs> poor, <laughs> poor used car salesman. They get yeah. a bad rep sometimes. And so it's just like, you know, how, how do I sell like Nadia? How do I show up to each and every conversation as, as who I am and invite people into my work um, and for those times when it's not a good fit, because I think that's also one thing that we have been mistaught, if you will, is that every single person, if they're human and they're breathing, they're fit. And that's not always true. Um, and so going into those conversations with different expectations um, and being prepared to say, you know what, Gloria, I don't think this is a good fit right now. Right. And then mm -hmm. I'll be more than happy to refer you to someone in my network. And being OK with that, I think, is definitely also part of that that process. Yeah, that that is a, a good lesson that I know I know had I've had to learn because again it goes back to I think you hear so much about well, you know, when you're in sales, you're gonna hear no a lot and you're gonna have to learn to deal with rejection. But if you can flip it where you're actually rejecting someone, you know, nicely, but in a way realizing that, yeah, you're not maybe you're not a good fit. And it could be that they may be a good fit later, but maybe mm -hmm. they're just not a good fit right now. And to be okay with that. Um, wh what else do you think is important? Cause I have, I have an idea of, I think part of it also stems from really being, as you said, courageous, but also I think confident about what it is that you're selling too. Oh, yeah. how, how, what do you think, how does that play in as well? It plays, it's a big part of it. Um, we tend to, and I know these are broad generalizations, but I have found that we as women actually have a very natural, innate ability to sell. I think if we start to shrink and make it more complicated when it's our work, when it's our service, you know, and then it's about us. And so now all the attention is on us. Um, and it's like, uh oh. But, you know, when you think about the, the things that we call the girlfriend or sister or mom about, a sale or, you know, whatever. We didn't stop and pause and have all these conversations that we have now about it. It was like, I know she has a need. I know where that is. I'm connecting them done. And so I think that when we learn to work through all the muck in our minds, but like you said, sometimes it's definitely rooted in the confidence. Um, I teach to take the shift off of you and really start to focus on how people are different as a result of working with you mm. because now we can start to assign values we can really put a lot of words around it that in many times doesn't really reflect on us they get to work with us right but it's not 
all on us and we get to really start to see the the greater value instead of placing like you know charging your worth and all that kind of stuff which can bring up all these other connotations it's like no let's take a moment to think about how are your clients different as a result of working with you and just write out everything and some of those are very tangible a lot of times there are some of them are intangible but what I found is that with most women there is this ripple effect like when they change their clients their clients go on to have an effect on other people. And so it's like, whoa, wait a second. And so honestly, working with me is like priceless. So I could never really charge you enough to work with me. And then you go into the conversation completely different because you're like, yeah, I'm amazing. <laughs> I, I love that. And that is such a empowering way to look at it that I, I love that. And, and I think it also goes to um, something that I had a mentor talk to me about one time as well is the fact that when you really are putting, putting the emphasis more on this transformation and, and putting the emphasis on the client and, and the needs that they have, if you're not looking to help them and to be able to sell your, you know, service, whatever it is to them, you're doing them a disservice because they're, they need what you have. And if you don't offer it to them, then you're depriving them of that. Yes. And sure, they can get somebody else, but it's not going to be the same as from you because we're all unique and we all have our, our, particular way. And we're going to appeal to certain people and maybe not appeal to others. Yes. And we have to be okay with that as well. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, one of the things you also talk about is the importance of finding your lane and, and trying not to do it all. I know I've, <laughs> I've done this in the past. Can you explain why this is so important? <laughs> I don't know, a woman alive is not busy. So <laughs> I think that it is important for us to really get support um, probably sooner rather than later. I think we tend to, to, to default to wait to the last second and now I'm drowning. Um, but it, it enables us to do our best work. And then when you think about as your company begins to grow, like whatever your vision is for your company, it's like, oh, wait a second. There are things that I need to now delegate so that I can show up more powerfully in this way, whatever that way is for your business. Um, and I've just found that when you don't get the right support and you're trying to do it all, it eventually leads to burnout. And so this amazing business that you have and these amazing transformations you're providing, you're now resenting. You don't like your clients. <laughs> you don't like to come to your work. You're like, wait a second. So, and I've been there. I realized one day, I was like, wait a second. I absolutely hate everything about this. What happened? I used to enjoy it. And it was just like, oh, wait, I'm doing too much. And I need to start to let some things go. So it frees up my brain space, my energy, so that I can show up more powerfully in my work. Mm. Well, that's interesting that you mentioned that because that's actually what I was going to ask you about next is, is what has been like one of the lessons, big lessons that you've had to learn in, in starting your own agency now, you know, and, and switching from corporate to, to being a, a small business owner in your own right? Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> many, so many lessons. One lesson I, I've learned is the power of focus. So when I made the decision to shift the business and we launched this agency, we had one offer. And I know that makes a lot of people cringe because you're like, what about all the money you're leaving on the table? And I get it. <laughs> but at that time, I was so uncertain about uh, quite a few things. I was just, I just need to figure this one thing out. But what I found is it actually allowed me to go through those iterations faster to make my mistakes, to tweak it, to really refine it a lot faster than I think if I had started out with like three different offers. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that's one big lesson is understanding the power of focus. And obviously that looks different for everyone. The other thing was to really honor who I am, like my, my unique style, like Nadia is Nadia. There are certain ways that I really like to work with people. And there have been times over the years that I would try to force myself to do something because my coach suggested it or because the numbers made sense. That's a big one for me. Oh, the no well, that makes perfect sense on paper, but it doesn't make sense for Nadia to do it that way, right? And so to give myself permission 
um, to really show up in my business and operate in my role in the areas that really make me shine. And if there's an offer that we want to, you know, to offer to create um, or provide to clients, then it may require me to get support or hire a team to do some of those pieces or all of those pieces because it's a great offer for clients, but it's not it's not best for Nadia to do it. So, but to be okay with that, because sometimes our egos get in the way and we, we tell ourselves a story that I have to be the one to do it because I am the business owner. I am the creator. And that's not always true. So I've learned to, you know, hire people that are better than you and, I, and let them do their part and let them do it well. Yeah, absolutely. And and we forget, I mean, if you look at successful companies that are out there, even if they started small with one person, the reason that they're successful and the reason that they're still in business maybe today, you know, mm-hmm. years later than when they started is because they did realize that, yeah, we have to let other people in and be able to let go of some of those tasks. And, and, and I love how you said, get people who are, um, you know, even smarter than you, or, or certainly smarter than you in certain areas, Mm -hmm. be able to appreciate that. Um, You don't have to do it all. You really don't. And and it's so much better when you don't, and you're going to grow a lot faster um, easier. And mm-hmm. I, I love finding ways that I can do things easy and relaxed. Yes. So I, I, I think that's awesome that you're talking about that. Um, how, if someone listening to this, um, you know, and is there any way that they could get it wrong, even though, you know, they're, they're hearing this, but, but maybe they, you know, is there any way that they could get it wrong? And, 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 and then what would they do about it? What do you think? <laughs> well, I guess there are ways that you could get it wrong, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to reframe that because I think one of the things that we as business owners get to do, a lot of times we're doing things we've never done before. We get to create things that don't exist and then bring that to fruition. And so I think part of the blessing and the curse in that is we get to create things that don't exist and bring it into fruition. So there's not always a blueprint there, you know, there are the ways we would like them to go. Um, So I think, you know, a couple of things that I would share with that, because I think that there are typically two schools of thought that I've seen. You have those that are just like, okay, I have enough and I just go for it. And you figure things out and you tweak it along the way, which I think is a definitely a great way for us to do business. Um, But you have to take the time to evaluate. So when I'm in that mode, I just call it, we're in what I call experimentation time. And the things that we're putting out in social media or in our newsletter or the offers is all in a big experiment. And I just want to see how people respond. I personally have to have a conversation with myself that goes something like that so that I give myself permission to screw it up, right? So because if I go into that, like, this is the offer, this is it, this is, then I, I tend to not have that same level of flexibility and forgiveness with myself. I'm like, nope, we failed. It's a complete. And it's like, no, 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 let's learn a lesson. So, and in that, you know, we have regular audits, regular times where we're evaluating the, the results and really taking time to kind of pick apart the things that worked, the things that didn't work as well. And giving ourselves that time and space, which I think is the best way to go into it. Now I get that We're also talking about time. We're talking about money. You know, we're talking about relationships because sometimes the offer is a big bomb in our opinion and clients didn't have a reaction. I get all of that. So I'm not negating it, but I think that when we understand it's part of the process. Um, And if you need to put in your contingency plans. So what would I do if? So again, if for whatever reason, this goes sideways, you now know how you're going to handle it. And it's better to do that before it goes sideways and you're not emotional. So then you can say, oh, well, this is what we said we would do. And you can just make it happen. But it's hard to not get caught up in making mistakes in business, yeah. but you're yeah. going to make them. <laughs> this is true. And and I saw somewhere, somebody, somebody talked about fail and gave a, a new definition for fail. It was first attempt in learning. 
Yes, I love that. Uh, yeah, I do too, because because it's that's it. You know, I mean, when you were a kid, you didn't immediately walk. No, you fell down several times riding a bike. You probably fell down a couple of times too. You know, you weren't, yes. you weren't, you have to find your balance and it's the same thing with business. You've also going to have to find um, maybe not so much balance. I'm, I'm starting to learn more. I, I like the word harmony because oh, well, I think this one. idea of like life work, you know, or uh, balance is kind of uh, almost impossible to achieve, but if you can have maybe things yeah, work in harmony, then, yes. then, then, you know, because sometimes you're going to want to spend more time maybe with your personal life and, and let something not go perhaps, but you're going to want to scale back a little bit. And, and that's mm -hmm. when perhaps you get somebody else to be able to take over, uh, something, or you get a system in place that is going to handle something uh, for you. So you're not doing yeah. it all yourself. Yeah. Um, what, what gets you really excited about the work that you do? Oh gosh. Helping my clients make money. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. It excites me. <laughs> when we set a goal and they hit it or we exceed it. And they are just like, oh my gosh. Cause again, you know, I get to support them. And sometimes it's an idea or an offer they've never made before. Mm -hmm. And to see it work, it's like, yes. <laughs> So yes, I love that. <laughs> that That's never awesome. gets old. Yeah. I, that, that keeps you passionate about your business, doesn't it? When oh, you can yeah. see that. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like, yes, this is working. I'm so excited. And I think that's an important lesson for business owners to remember as well, is that, again, it's about focusing in on your clients. So if you can remember that you're in this to help them transform, and when you get to see that, then that becomes this positive reinforcement that you can maybe help you to overcome when you do have those setbacks. You can remember that, oh yeah, <laughs> they did they did benefit from this. Okay, I got to keep going. <laughs> yes. And I encourage you, when I was in corporate, I had what I call the kudos folder. Mm -hmm. And it was all those emails and, you know, out of girls that I got just yep. for mostly at the time it was for my annual performance review. Cause I never right. remember what the heck I did all year, <laughs> but then I was like, Oh wait, I should translate that in my business life mm -hmm. because you do have those days. And you're like, nothing, I, I'm not making a difference. <laughs> nothing I'm doing is working. It's so funny. Like, we're just like, nothing I've ever done is worked. And it's like, seriously, Nadia, like cut it out. But mm -hmm. then you have your client testimonials, you know, your feedback, you're like, Oh wait, that did work. Okay. I'm just having a day, but I'll get yeah. over it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's unfortunately our, our brains are hardwired to seek negative. And so we do have to have some ways of being able to overcome that. And, and yes, I recommend that to my clients as well is to keep that, you know, a gratitude folder, keep, keep testimonials handy because there are yes. going to be days where you're going to need to be able to pick yourself up a bit and get going again. Yes. And it's not just for your marketing. It's for you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's your own, your own mindset, which is so important uh, in being able to be successful. Um, what are you, what are you curious about right now? Ooh. Okay. This is probably going to sound strange, but there, one thing I'm curious about right now is how to be a good mom. <laughs> Yeah. And like you said, I love that word harmony, how to make, find that harmonious balance between motherhood <laughs> and business, because right now I don't feel like we're there yet. <laughs> well, that's, uh, you know, that's something to work on. How, how may I ask how old your child is or she is six. Ah, okay. Yep. She's six. Right. But, um, the unique part about our journey is that by Bio biologically she is my niece ah. um we just adopted we just finished our adoption process earlier this year so she's mm. only been with us for half her life when she was three she she came to live with us and so it was definitely a very abrupt leap <laughs> into motherhood <laughs> like, oh wait what just happened <laughs> And we don't have any biological children. So we literally went from an empty house to wait, what is happening? So yeah, so it's been the, those life lessons of, oh, wait, hold on, wait, got to integrate, got to do this, got to make this adjustment. So I haven't, I have not mastered it at all. So mm. that's where I am right now. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll t I, I'd love to tell you that it gets easier. Um, and, and it does a bit sometimes, but, um, but 
you know what I will say is that there are moments of such joy and fun that you're going to have a lot as you're going on. And, and at least you didn't have to deal with the, you know, you know, trying to give your baby a bath and, and being terrified that you're going to, you know, drop this, this kid. So at least, you know, you, you avoided that. And cause I have that, that was terrifying, you know, just <laughs> doing this, you know, this, because they're so dependent, you know, yes. now three-year-old there, she was probably already getting some, you know, independence. And so I'm sure yes. that's been, that's been challenging. So, but it's, it's all good. I will tell you, I've got two grown children now and I, they're, they're amazing and I'm very blessed. And um, so I, I think you're on a wonderful journey and I wish you all yeah. the blessings for it. So, and I see you've got a little mom back there on your desk. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. My mother's day card. I was like, oh yeah, I got to let that soak in a little bit. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's so cool. Um, let's see, is there anything else that you think would be worthwhile before we finish up here today to share uh, any other words of wisdom regarding either the, the sales process, helping, helping business owners with that, or, or anything, even just general advice that you give, maybe you share with your clients to help them. I would say from a sales perspective, um, one, make the system and process your own. So spend to take a moment to think about how you want clients, prospects to feel going through that journey and then implement the systems and processes to make that happen. Um, there's a lot of great advice out there, but I think when we make it our own, that's when it truly becomes a lot more powerful because then people, they feel it along the way and they know that they're not just another number to you even before they become a client. And that is so, I think it's probably more important these days now than even in the past because there's a lot going on these days. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. And, and that, and that is the thing is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of competition and, and there always has been, and there always will be, but mm -hmm. you know, when you do focus in on you and the value that you're providing for your clients, then that's half the battle right there. And, yes. and you, you can, as long as you keep focusing on that, then you're, you're going to get there. But I, I love how you do say it is important to come up with your own, um, process, because sometimes we do get too caught up in following what this expert says and that expert says, and then it doesn't, you know, we follow it to a T and it doesn't work for us. And we're like, oh, I must be doing something wrong. Yep. Yep. You got to put you in it. So I'm totally for it. I like Gloria mentioned, I have a degree in engineering, lots of formulas. <laughs> so I get it. And in business, you have to insert you, your values, your personality, got to make it your own. Yeah, definitely. Well, if someone has been listening to this today and would like to know a little bit more about, you know, how, your process and what you do with clients, how can people uh, find out more about you? Where's the best place to go? Uh, one place is our website. That's thedoyanagency.com. Um, we also have a quiz to help you learn more about your persona and maybe some of the blind spots that you may encounter in sales. And so you can do that at discoveryoursalesblindspot.com. Very good. All right. Well, I will be sure and have that information in the show notes. So if you're somewhere listening to this in your car or something and you don't have a pen in handy, just go to live, love, engage podcast.com when you have some time and then you'll be able to get that information. And um, yeah, so this has been really great and you are a delightful person and I, I can Thank see you. that you really do care about your clients and, and I see why you are a successful salesperson in your own right. So I Thank appreciate you. you being on the show today. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah. And I want to thank all of you for watching and for listening to the podcast. And I really appreciate it. And if you've got some value out of this today, I hope that you will share the podcast with a friend, tell people about it. And of course, leave a rating, you know, wherever you listen to this, like Apple would be great. I appreciate those as well. And until next time, as always, I encourage you to go out and live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically.